We gotta go to the bullpen. Welcome to the Highland Bullpen, the all-new podcast bringing America's pastime to Scotland shores. It doesn't matter if you're a Hall of Famer heading for Cooperstown or you're fresh out of the minor leagues. This is the podcast for you. Hello folks and welcome to another episode of the Highland Bullpen and in exciting news this time the Highland Bullpen has actually managed to see its first bout of live baseball since we started the podcast almost two years ago with a a trip over to the the US of A and where else would the bullpen go but to see the Durham Bulls uh, as I attended the sensibly named Durham Bulls Athletic Park as the home opener for the season. Uh, The the Bulls were hosting the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimps, which must be one of the better names. In fact, plenty of good names in the the minor leagues for for baseball teams. I think they sometimes might even do that as a wee bit of marketing as well. But uh, it was great, great to do that. So I'm joined tonight by Dave and we'll just have a wee chat over the the game and the experience and, and, and what it was like. So, a uh, fantastic, fantastic evening was was had, other than the final score or the early scores as well, which we'll no doubt come on to during our, our conversation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about it, Alan, especially about these jumbo shrimp johnnies. You know, I don't know. Not just any old shrimp. It's got to be a jumbo shrimp, isn't it? You know, I had a feeling that... Uh, that South End United might, or or, or Morecambe, or both of them. But yeah. I think they're just regular shrimps. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But tell I us think, how you tell us how you got on. Oh. Yeah, I think one of the problems with, with shrimps as well is the Americans don't quite appreciate what we term scampi when they come to the UK, and we get this. We get a uh, far from jumbo bit of prawn stuck in amongst some batter, which for aficionados of jumbo shrimp from the States is probably quite a disappointing culinary <laughs> experience when they come to the UK. But one day we'll need to get to Jacksonville and test out the jumbo shrimps on their barbecue, which they no doubt will have at, at their home games. So, yeah, uh, great experience. Uh, I've obviously been to a few games now, but I would possibly go as far to say this was my most enjoyable baseball experience there with a bunch of family sitting in the North Carolina sun till 10 o'clock at night, uh, just in short sleeves. Uh, Not what we would expect watching football at home just now, Dave. Uh, And I think, I'd like to think we've probably learned enough about the game over the last few years that I was able to understand what was going on a lot more and appreciate it a lot more than probably the other games, which I've always enjoyed. But, uh, yeah, certainly now starting to get much more into the, the technical side of things. Um, yeah, where were your seats, uh, Al? Were you... Yeah, good we seats, we'd so. good seats. So that was the... Uh, we were we were in line with third base. Um, so we had hoped for some foul balls coming our way. Uh, there was a couple of grandsons were at the game. Uh, and... <clears throat> Not surprisingly, the the stadium is interesting and the ballpark is interesting. It's got, I think maybe you would remember the old Tigers stadium. It's like a covered arena uh, and they have a lot of netting over there. Uh, So health and safety quite clearly taking precedence over catching of a foul foul ball. So most of what happened when a ball was fouled off to the left, to where we were, uh, it was going out into the street. So... We had on street parking a few hundred yards from the game, but fortunately not there because that could cause a little bit of damage. But it had a wonderful clatter when it hit, hit the roof. It was like an old iron type metal roof. So you could just hear it directly above you. Uh, and the, the netting is very well positioned to avoid 
uh, too many balls going in there. Slightly disappointing. One did come fairly close to us. Um, uh, There's a young lad there with his girlfriend. Uh, he did a superb catch, uh, which no doubt impressed his uh, date for the evening, uh, and then passed it off to a wee kid in, in front of him. So he did all the right things. So, so, yeah. so fair, fair play that, to him. That's the way to do it. Actually, I was watching the um, the 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 you know the the Tigers uh, Red Sox game yeah. coming from Comerica Park, and um, I was watching the Nesson uh, viewing of it. The and it's you know there, Dave O'Brien and um, Dennis Eckersley, ex uh, pitcher, and they were talking about the old Tiger Stadium, and yeah. the commentator was. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been there. It's a, what a fantastic experience that was. But they were saying how talking about netting and uh, yeah. health and safety, and they were saying that the um, behind home plate, they were. Uh, so 55 feet away, quite a short distance and um, not all that high up and yep. no netting in the in the commentary booth. And it says it was yep. really actually pretty dangerous. Oh, wow. although, the, although, the, although the famous um, uh, Tigers uh, commentator had actually brought up some netting in his own right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they had to keep an eye out for... Aaron yeah. balls coming up at them. Yeah. So what well, what did happen was the end of whenever, and I guess I didn't notice it must have happened when the bulls were fielding, but obviously the shrimps dugout was in front of us. So when they finished, uh, when they got the bulls out in an innings, the fielder with the ball would come and throw the ball over the net into the crowd, which was good. Yeah. Although one of them failed. One of them didn't oh, manage no. to get it over the net. Uh, I had a wee look and I rummaged around the bottom of the netting, shrugged his shoulders and walked away with his hands up to a cacophony of boos, justifiably from the from the home support. So, uh, no, that's that's part of the fun. D- Durham Bulls put on a great show and they claim Wool E. Bull is the best mascot in the world. And he gets involved. He's he's dancing on the dugouts. He even at one of the, I can't remember which innings it was, but he has an innings where he gets a go kart, and he actually speeds around the ballpark. Uh, at one point, he's, he's, he skidded onto the the actual grass at one point. But yeah, Wooly Bull is allowed to go and do that. Didn't you actually meet him, Alan? We did meet him. I have my picture with Wooly Bull as well, which we'll need to share. So the, the Highland Bull met Wooly Bull. Yeah, what did he reckon to Hamish, our, our mascot? Seemed, seemed a fairly friendly, convivial meeting, so we were, were happy to do that. He was a good he was a good lad. We were there early before the guys were meeting at the game, and so plenty of people were going in getting him. And he, he's, yeah... You don't become the mascot if you've not got the banter. But he was having good banter with the crowd and the, the kids and, and grown up kids like ourselves as well. Yeah. So. Everyone loves a mascot, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, it's great, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I think at some point I'll need to go through my photo collection and find all my photos with a mascot. So, yeah, I've certainly got one. Ronnie the Rhino, at least. Yeah. Um, Leeds Rhinos, he's, he's one of the. He's one of the best, surely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, Willie Bull was in good good form. Um, the, the, the usual innings entertainment, ch- chasing Willie Bo- Willie Bull around the around the park. Although he's possibly not that athletic, he looked fairly athletic. But they actually had a a video image of him doing it, uh, which was a <clears throat> yeah. You're not going to beat a video image of <laughs> 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 Willie Bull doing that, uh, and. The the first pitch was thrown out by a local celebrity, and this is a, a mark of society now, but the celebrities they chose for the first pitch were YouTubers. So <laughs> uh, It's like when my daughter has to explain to me on Strictly Come Dancing who these people are, or they're YouTubers with 17 million followers. Uh, 
that these people are now sufficiently important to get first pitch at the uh, opening day. Yeah, and, just, you, you hark back to the old days when uh, YouTube would be an insult in Glasgow for someone who was <laughs> behaving <laughs> badly in the pub. Just pack that in, YouTube. Yes, yes. I wonder, well, we need to find out where the YouTube phrase came from. Yeah, that's a, mm. that's a good one. <laughs> yes. So we also do the, the for opening day, they had, uh, they, they actually had a chaplain saying a prayer. They do the national anthem. They introduce everybody in the teams. So you have two big lineups of the teams. But they also had a flyover. Uh, so they really? had five. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. They had sort of like five vintage planes flying over, which I wasn't expecting. Then they suddenly came in. They were fantastic. But they, mm. they did circle around a few times as well. Uh, so, no, um, full credit to the Bulls for the, the entertainment. And, and minor league, in a city like Durham, uh, it, it's good to see the community support and, ha- and have that team there. About 7,500 a game. Uh, I'd have thought that had been over half full. Um, they also have, it's a, it's a little bit like the Green Monster at one point in left field. They actually have a bull standing on grass, and if a home run hits the bull, you get free steak, <laughs> and if it hits the grass, you get salad. <laughs> so this, the grass bit is much smaller than the bull. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that because you think, well, why would they do that? But obviously, the bull is higher than the grass. Yeah, so, a bit further away, more more. Tricky yeah. to, to hit, but uh, yeah, they have some great deals going on at baseball yeah. grounds. So they, you know, uh, my, my favourite was Bernie the Brewer sliding down into a mug of beer back in the day. I, I don't know whether they still do it, but uh, so. yeah. So, so one of the reasons I came over on on the trip just now was a bit of golf, uh, and one of the games I played. Uh, played with a father and son from Milwaukee, and they actually had Brewers gear on. And if I didn't, if I didn't know you, Dave, I might not have got the conversation going well so well. Because I said, "Oh yeah, I'm a bit of baseball," and I go, oh, "Yeah," and the guy goes, "Brewers," and I goes, "Oh, Bernie the Brewer." So he <laughs> highly impressed by my knowledge of the of Bernie. Good, oh, good stuff. Yeah, I got that. I mean, you know, a Red Sox fan. I like the Tigers as well, but yeah, the the Brewers, you, you just yeah. gotta like them, and they get they get fantastic crowd. You know, I'm not sure the seven and a half thousand people at the Tigers game just now. So yeah. you know, we're talking about this before going on air, but um, they're playing in the afternoon. It's um, it's not a very nice day. It's been raining pretty much all the way through, but uh, I see they're almost through five innings, so. Um, do do yeah. I want to check in on the score just now, Dave? Yeah, you're all right. It's uh, I, I would like it to go five innings. So if it gets called off, then um, the result will stand. We'll put it that way, shall we? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So five innings. The the Jumbo Shrimps pitcher did a perfect five innings last, last night to to kick yeah. the game off. Yeah. Um, I think the Bulls got. A walk in the sixth, um, mm. and they got their only two hits of the game. I think in the seventh, which is a bit of a tough evening for for them on their home opener. Yeah, yeah. I suppose um, if they're up against a uh, you know a real pitching ace, then it, it can go like that, can't it? You know, that, that say good pitching will always be good hitting, and um, yeah, yeah, let's let, let's be. Uh, uh, yeah. Positive about that, and just say they were up against the, the ace, the, the yeah, jumbo yeah. shrimp yeah. ace, <laughs> the ace, the ace jumbo shrimp. shrimp. Yeah. yeah, the massive <laughs> jumbo shrimp. Yeah, almost so, a lobster. <laughs> yeah, so the poor pitcher for the Bulls, he was struggling a bit in the first innings. It, it, I mean, he got the first guy out in four balls. Um, it looked fairly promising, and then. Out of nowhere, the 
jumbo strip hits a jumbo ball and scores the only home run of the night mm. uh, in the first innings. The bases were loaded. Um, uh, I'm struggling to remember if those bases were loaded in the. F- I think they might have been loaded in the s- second innings. He did. He did well to get out the first innings just for one run because the the, the shrimps were getting a few hits. Then uh, the bases were loaded and he was taken out, which I think was the second, because I felt a wee bit sorry for the next Bulls pitcher, because <clears throat> it's pretty hard to defend a bases loaded situation. And the Shrimps scored five runs in the second innings. So again, we're on the we're on a difficult situation immediately for for that. So yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering, never having been to you know a triple A game, you watch some of the spring spring training uh games and you know they're obviously regular ballparks, aren't they? But yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just wondering about the specifications. Are they? Yeah, you know, I imagine they're probably not much more than uh, you, you know they're required to be, or was it a big outfield? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. There was when so there is video in the Durham Bulls Twitter feed today, uh, in the eighth or ninth. They shoot one of the Bulls fielders, outfielders caught a ball that was about to go out of the park, which again mm-hmm. is another great thing to see. And I have in my mind it's 395 feet. It might yeah. be 365. I think it's 395 feet. Is that centre field? Yeah. 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 So you can see the video with the number yeah. uh, painted on there. Uh, or, that, or, that would be pretty... Standard one is centre field about three hundred, and then left field and right field, you know, can be. Well, I mean, it's it's quite quite short in Boston and New York, isn't it? Just over three hundred feet, but it's usually three twenty, yeah. and then sort of curves round, doesn't it? So it sounds like you would imagine they would mirror what the, you, you know, because the idea is to get those players into yeah. into the show, isn't it? So yeah, the ballparks are going to be. Similar, I think they try and I mean, they try and replicate. Certainly, at spring training. I think they sort of build parks that are similar you know, to their own. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. So the, the the fielders and batters get used to it. I didn't actually think of that for the minor league affiliates. So the the Bulls are an affiliate of the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, mm. Now, I think it might have been in the conversation we had before we started recording. But you mentioned Austin Meadows, who yeah. the Tigers took from the Rays recently. So Isaac Paredes, right. uh, he went to the Rays in exchange. So he was playing for the Bulls last night. So an ex-Tiger playing for the Bulls. Oh, right. He got the first hit, which I was quite mm-hmm. happy to see an ex-Tigers guy go and, go and do that. Um, slightly tragically, when he got the first hit and got on base, and the crowd were excited, and it was nice to have something to, to mm-hmm. cheer knowing what the ultimate outcome is going to be anyway. But the next guy comes along, also manages, he gets like a half-decent bit of contact on there, but the, the, the shrimps turn it into a double play. So yeah. <laughs> being on base didn't last very long for Isaac or in, indeed any of the Bulls, the Bulls players. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, 7-0 was the final score. Um, the good news for the Bulls fans is Opening night, they finished with a fantastic firework display. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They don't hold back, do they? You know, yeah. when, you go to, when you go to a sporting event in America, it's always, you know, a fantastic uh, show. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved it. Um, I, I don't know. It was 10, 15 minutes of fireworks. You could smell the gunpowder. Really? I, I, love, I love that. Uh, I just, and I just sat there and I said to the guys, I compared it. If we did something comparable in Scotland, we'd probably have a couple of bangers go up in there yeah. for like 60 seconds. And thought, well, that, that, that's it, folks. You can go home now. But, what, yeah. what does the um, sort of, I'm not very knowledgeable on the, it's sort of AAA is the, the one below 
the majors, you know, then you've got double A and sort of high, yeah. and, high and low A. But what what's their season like then? Do they play as many games as the as, as the majors as in the majors or? They should. I could have a quick look on that. Um, mm. I noticed, yeah, the, the schedule. Uh, yeah, the, the, I've got the schedule somewhere on here. Let me have a quick look, Dave. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to to see that. I know that. Um, yeah, it's predominantly there. The, the players there want to progress up to the the majors, uh, so they could be called up at any moment. So. They're like they're playing meaningful games, but they're also really just keep you know trying to improve out there. There'll be there'll be prospects in there, you know, like Spenny Torkelson, who I see got his first hit the other night. Oh, yeah. He he would have been playing for the the, the Tigers um, AAA team last year coming through. So I'm not sure if it's 162 games, but it's a quick go through the schedule just now for the Bulls and it's a to the end of September which again makes sense if these guys can get called into the majors yeah. at any point um, they do the one thing they do do which is quite interesting like the, it's a six game stretch series with the Shrimps just now right. so there's presumably cost issues or practicality issues maybe while the Lower leagues might then do that. They're possibly playing lesser, less teams, um, so yeah. you do a, a six-game stretch means that the shrimps don't then have to come back to Durham. <coughs> um, they can almost get that, that that spell done and dusted. Yeah, cut down a bit on traveling expenses and yeah, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, makes sense. Tough. It's tough, as you know, we've talked about it before, but it's tough, the, that gulf between being in the minors and the, and the majors, the show, but that's that's what they all want to, that's what they're all there for, that's what they're all hoping for. The, I, I don't know the backstory of the, the pitcher last night who did his perfect five innings, but he's got to feel good about himself. He's maybe bringing a wee bit of attention to himself. Yeah. Um, the, the, the lad with the... The Bulls who made that catch near the end, that's there's a bit of professionalism about that. You're getting humped, but you want to then go and show that I'm I'm still gonna go and do this and I can still perform at the at, at the end of the game. So it was yeah. good to see that. And, and then a guy like Paredes gone traded from the Tigers to the Rays and the Rays put him to there straight away. He's got to think, well, the Rays have got a good roster. But what, what can I do to get myself on that 40 man roster? And I have to, to come here and impress uh, and, and, and do it. Um, it. For the fans, it looks great watching the games. But for these guys, I always think it's. I, I like watching lower level football and I like watching minor league baseball because you know, these are guys who are <laughs> they're desperately trying to show something that I, I don't think baseball gets the same. Old hands hanging around AAA, maybe that you might get as you go down the leagues in football. I think it's uh, you, you possibly you're not you don't move down if you've played in the majors. You're not going to go to AAA because you're probably if you're you're a multi millionaire by that stage, I guess. Yeah, you see the guys who are on the up, and and it can be quite a long process, isn't it? I mean, some you know some of these. Um, they're still called prospects and then they can be 24, 25 years old, can't they? So it's a little bit different to football where, you know, you, you, you know, usually they're sort of, um, they don't really have a reserve league anymore, do they? It's usually sort of the under-23 team, which is attached to to the club itself, to the football club itself. And and those those players, some of those players will be on in the, the actual first sort of first team squad if you like many yeah. of the other amount. but if you're good enough at 17 18 then you'll you'll get called into the soccer team will you whereas it's it's not unusual for you know to be 23 24 years old before you get moved up to um to the majors and then you might yeah. have you might play until you're 40 i'm pretty sure 
Red Sox have re-signed. I'm sure he's played from two or three times before. One of the pitchers is it um, is it Hill? I'm not sure he's 41 or 42. And they just signed yeah. him back, and he's on the rotation. Have some sort of aircraft. It's not a it's not a flyover for for us in any way. Not not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I heard that. I just put it on for the podcast. Today. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's um, it, it's a it, it's a very different way of getting getting into the game. So, yeah, in terms of the Bulls, um, I'm trying to think. I've, I've been to minor league games. I don't think I've been to AAA before, but this was this seemed bigger than the other minor league games I've been to. When you mm. the catering concessions inside, uh, the full range of the usual. Americana of uh, culinary delights that you could have. So I tried the fries, the hot dog, the popcorn. Uh, they, they're all ticked off. Um, I, I did log some beers on untapped. Uh, yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. And they, they had mm-hmm. beers on tap at the main concession stands, but they also had a, a separate area, self-service. There was a lady helping the self-service area with our fridges. So you go and help yourself to your beer for your fridge, go and scan the barcode and yeah. then just swipe your card. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just so convenient and so well done. Yeah, I'm and sure it, that would work in, uh, you, you know, sort of <laughs> pump us down there, you know. Can yeah. you just- can you just imagine there being self-service uh, drinks available in Scotland or anywhere else in Britain for that matter? But I don't probably think we're that, just probably not. And interestingly, so here's one. The guys I went, the family I went to the game with last night, uh, they're coming over to Scotland in June. Um, yeah. And I've, I think the American phrase is, I've scored tickets for Scotland via Armenia in the Euro Nations game. Excellent. For, for eight of us. Uh, so I just want to see how they find that sporting experience compared to going and watching the baseball. I think I'm hoping there'll be a big crowd because that'll be something yeah. fairly unique and exciting for them. It'll be a very different atmosphere. But <clears throat> I've talked through the range of steak pie, mince pie, macaroni <laughs> pie, and bovril, which they can enjoy at the game. Uh, whether it satisfies them, um, we will we will find out at some point. No, I, I'm you know I'm a big uh, exponent of the, the, the you know supporter of the the pie and bovril option. You know, with a, a dot of brown sauce, and they'll think it's really exotic. And yes, know. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I'll take them through to Edinburgh, and they can have the the salt and sauce. Oh yeah, as well, yeah. So this. Uh, there's another uh, one. So. Sounds like yeah, a, a great, uh, a great night. What's just? I'm I'm interested in. Uh, it's a while since I've seen it, but obviously there's the film Bull Durham. Kevin Costner, the first one of his baseball yeah. so-called baseball trilogy, and um, so as the name suggests, is there a connection? Yeah, so, I think Bull Durham is. It was a uh, the Durham Bulls are the the location and the basis for the movie. Right. And I'm assuming without doing any research that the film title was transposed to Bull Durham and the Bull might be a reference to uh, the older lad, which was actually yeah. in, in, in the movie and has uh, yeah. the, the lady, the star of the, the female star of the movie, because she, she liked the young prospects, but uh, that's, right. that's, that's not how life ended up. So, so Bull, Durham Bull. Um, so I'm taken to understand that that is a tobacco brand. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Um, so I've been going out cycling when I've been here. I've been going along the American tobacco trail. Uh, so this mm-hmm. is a... A, a big feature of the area uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the bull I remember reading that so I've been surprised because you assumed it's a 
agricultural livestock thing, but uh, the, the picture of the bull then would have been part of the branding to advertise the, 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 the tobacco cigarettes. Yeah, so they've just kept the name, but the connection with that is just you know, yeah. sort of arcade. And it, and it is Bull City when you when you go around the billboards and stuff uh, are, are referencing it as Bull City. So it's slightly intrigued by it because obviously I suppose tobacco in a marketing perspective is a from the UK side, I guess maybe the US is persona non grata, but obviously mm -hmm. this is a big thing for the the city of Durham, so it's uh, it's easy to keep keep that. So yeah, funnily enough, I was in uh, Durham in Northumberland in the the, yep. the, the north of uh, north of England quite recently. It's the first time I've ever been. You sort of go through it. On used to go through it all the time when I was travelling between Yorkshire and Edinburgh. You know, when I lived in Edinburgh in the eighties, and it was a great. We had a great. We went there to renew the rain's passport. Yeah, did it in person rather than sending it off, and uh, yeah, so maybe there's some sort of connection with this place. Maybe yeah. if you looked back into the naming of it, might have been somebody from that neck yeah, of the yeah. woods, Cathedral City. It's a, it's a great town. Yeah, yeah, and the Pink Panthers' favorite baseball team. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. So Don't get me coat. <laughs> Yeah. A couple of things then to finish on. Uh, you mentioned Dadham there, which is the, the cricket team, oddly, that I've gone to see a few times. I, I, sh I should have spoken to, to him, but there's a chap a few seats along from us had a Middlesex cricket top on last night. Uh, oh, really? I made an assumption that he was Middlesex, and I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, that was interesting because I've been speaking to the American guys about cricket. Um, uh, so... It would have been good just to have had a chat with the guy, which I should, should have done that. You mentioned Lorraine there as well. So I'm finishing my trip uh, by going to see the, the Canes, the Carolina Hurricanes, tomorrow evening. But they are hosting, which might have been the reason why I'm still here as well, the Detroit Red Wings tomorrow Brilliant. evening. So I have my Red Wings. We have our Red Wings gear ready to go. Uh, the Canes have already qualified for the playoffs. That's not surprisingly not a feature that the Red Wings need to worry about <laughs> these days. But that's so yeah. excited to go and go and see the the hockey. Yeah, I think the Bruins are still in with a, a chance. I couldn't tell you for sure, but yeah, it's um, at this time of the year. It's like uh, one night. It's <laughs> the Bruins are on our TV screen and the. Yeah. Next night it's the Red Sox. So uh, yeah, very much a Boston good household. But uh, yeah, two two great sports. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, excited to go in. So yeah, also yeah. to see. I mean, I think Durham is a thriving city. I think a lot of IT pharmaceutical type work. But I would suspect they will have a lot of people from around the US. So people from Michigan. So I'd imagine there'll be a few Red Wings fans at the game as well. Mm. How far away are you from Detroit? It's quite a distance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, be a flight, wouldn't it? You know, rather than a drive. It would be a flight, Dave. I don't know if it would even... It might even be a couple of hours. We, we flew from Washington to get down here. Yeah. Yeah. We flew... To, I'm flying back via Philly, which I think is about an hour and 20 or so. Mm. So, yeah, so you go to North Carolina, Virginia, Washington, then you're, you're then heading over. I don't know what you get to before Illinois, Michigan and that, yeah. Yeah, you've got to be pretty committed to being a away fan in America. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why it's nice when you then go to games in the – it's a friendly atmosphere for people. Mm -hmm. And then the expats, I don't know if they'd be called expats or the people who've moved around, they can then go and uh, get in there and do, do yeah, that. Yeah, as well. Certain clubs that you always see a healthy away support and it's not like bus loads of supporters clubs going for, doing a six hour drive from wherever it is, is it? Or a train special getting yeah. in it 
this guys that uh, happened to live and work in in the area and uh the uh, Red Sox or Yankees or Tigers fans. <laughs> yeah. A bit uh, different. Yeah, you'll have... I mean, I wore Tigers gear to the game last night and I suppose you... Sort of, I, I, I felt, I've been around enough American sport, I felt comfortable with it. But when you get yeah. there, there, there's people with uh, Dodgers gear, with Yankees gear, uh, Red yeah, Sox yeah. gear. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, these will be baseball fans potentially living here, holidaying here, thinking here's a chance to go to a game and I, I can wear my, my own team's colours as well. Yeah, it probably is why, you know, the different, the lower leagues are well supported, aren't they? Because people yeah. can't always get to a, a major league game and uh, the standard in AAA will be excellent. Yeah. You know, they're seeing, they're seeing good quality baseball in yeah, in good arenas are they were great facilities. Yeah. So in summary, uh, a great night out at the Bulls. If you're in the Carolina, North Carolinas, uh, go and give them a, a look and give them some support. Uh, and enjoy the experience because they certainly know how to put on a show. So thank you to the Durham Bulls for uh, doing so last night. <laughs>